15 years ago, I took a date to this coffee shop. I did it because my boss at the university suggested that a coffee shop would be a perfect location for our first date. They said, everyone loves coffee. Turns out, me and that date don't love coffee. <laughs> but this place has been special for us. And my wife and I, date went well, my wife and I go back there now all the time for Bible studies that we host or participate in. We go there for business meetings, and we go there for mang berry smoothies. We love places like this, and you love places like this. And Dr. Ray Oldenburg, an urban sociologist, calls places like this third places. Third places are the places where we host our regular, voluntary, informal, and happily anticipated gatherings. And these are the ones that are happening outside of the home or the workplace. Your third place could be the paper garden of the local bookstore in your community. It could be the regional farmer's market. Everybody loves fresh tomatoes. It could be the beach, if you have the ability to get out to the shore. It may be the places of worship in your community. But regardless of where these places are, these places help us to fulfill the fundamental need of belonging. We all need to know that we belong to a people group, to a place, and that we can feel connected with the experiences we have both individually and collectively. Belonging matters. Social connection is that diversity of relationships, that diversity of the places that we interact with, the roles we play, the relationships we have, and the healthiness or unhealthiness of those relationships. Now, the only thing that maybe is not so great about this theory of third place is that it makes the assumption that everyone has a home, everyone has work, and that everyone has a community gathering space. But some of us, maybe in this room, Maybe people who are going to watch this recording later do not have these places. And as a result, they experience loneliness. Now, you might say, well, why would you talk about loneliness? Well, it's because this is a public health crisis. Dr. Vivek Murthy, the 21st Surgeon General of the United States of America, told us that we are facing in 2023 an epidemic of loneliness and isolation. This epidemic is causing major public health crises. And we have people working all around the world, all around this country, to address it. Now, for this, we learned from several studies that loneliness is causing real health impact. In 16 independent longitudinal studies, we see that loneliness and social isolation were linked to a 29% increase in heart disease and a 32% increase in stroke. Loneliness can also be attributed to a 50% increase in the development of dementia in older adults. It's pretty scary. Loneliness, this stat really messed me up. Loneliness is just as much a harm and just as much a cause of premature death as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I have asthma. My mother would kill me if I smoked one. <laughs> it's important to know that loneliness is not just a feeling and that loneliness is not just the absence of people around you. Sometimes you can be in a crowded room. Sometimes you can be in a theater watching a TED Talk, surrounded with people, but you feel alone. But Dr. Vivek Murthy did not just leave us with bad news. He provided six pillars to advance social connection. These pillars are going to mobilize our medical and mental health professionals. It's going to increase the amount of research that is taking place. It's going to implement using regional planners to develop places that will foster community. But my favorite of the pillars is actually the sixth pillar. It's to cultivate a culture of connection. You see, I like this pillar because all of us can participate. You don't have to have a PhD, a PsyD, or know how to look at architectural designs. You just have to be someone who is intentional with the ones who are around you. Now, I want to tell you three stories about how I've seen culture of connection in places you maybe wouldn't expect. 
and maybe some you would. The first place I want to take you to is my barber shop that I go to every two to three weeks. I actually went there two days ago. I drive 48 minutes to Greensburg, PA to go to my barber shop. It's a fantastic place. This barber shop is multicultural, it's multi generational. You see people from all walks of life and socioeconomic status. This barber shop is fantastic, but what makes it really cool is they provide premium services. When you go to this barber shop, when you go to this barber shop, you're able to get hot towel services and steam. You're able to get your unique hair needs met. For me, that's dealing with my widow's peak and my cowlick. It's also dealing with the bald spots that come whenever I have a flare up of alopecia. I found out about that in 2021. But this barber shop handles it all. They don't shy away from any problem. And as a result, I always walk away smiling. One of my favorite aspects of this barber shop is my barber, Daryl Guest. I've been going to Daryl for five years. I even have proof with the confirmation of my first appointment. Daryl's amazing. He's not just gifted with the clippers and with the shears. Daryl is amazing with how he listens and connects with people. Daryl always has conversations with me about sports, and Daryl talks with me about local politics and regional and national politics. We sometimes get into shows that we like on Pe Peacock or Amazon Prime. Daryl and I talk about it all. But one time, I decided to take his invitation to share how I was doing a little more serious. He asked me how my family was, and I opened up that I had a relative that was experiencing some mental health crisis. My relative had been diagnosed with mental illness back in 2013, and they were having a bad couple of weeks, early 2023. It got so bad that I was convinced I might lose this relative. That at any point I could get a call where this relative would have ended their life or someone may have ended it for them. I was scared. But Daryl allowed me to open up about it. And in an era where we still see some men, but not all, struggling to embrace all of their emotions, Daryl didn't make me hide any of mine. Daryl allowed me to express my vulnerability, my fears, my doubts. And when appropriate, Daryl chimed in and tried to encourage me and say, hey, I don't know how this is all going to play out, but I'm hoping for the best. He didn't placate me. He listened to me. I really appreciated that. Because of how Daryl listens, because of how Daryl connects, I always leave the shop smiling. <laughs> Daryl gets a five star for me for being a great active listener and for always following up. It's important for us to learn that for social connection to happen and for us to address this epidemic of loneliness, we need to take the time to actively listen to the people around us and to not just hear what they're sharing, but to follow up to check in. Because what's the point in hearing them if you don't come back and say, how are you doing now? Daryl does that exceptionally well. I believe that when we treasure one another, we turn ordinary places extraordinary. Places like this theater, that bookstore, the farmer's market can become so much more. They can transcend their physical walls if we just treasure the people that are in them. But some things happen regardless of the walls. I'm a beard enthusiast. I don't know if you can tell. But uh, I really love beards. I've loved them since I finally was able to connect my mustache and goatee. And when all that taco meat filled in and I had a full beard, I've been in love ever since. Last year, I got a birthday cake from one of the women at our church, and she had to make sure that I got a beard birthday cake. It was delicious. It was chocolate. So I make it a point to see beards, whether they be in cakes or in the Bahamas. I find nice beards, and I celebrate them, and I treasure them. And when I see somebody being intentional and consistent with their health and well-being, I acknowledge it. I acknowledge it with a four word phrase, 15 letters to make sure that people see, or people know rather, that I see them. I usually say, hey bro, nice beard. <laughs> now this compliment has gotten mixed reviews. 
There was one time in Pittsburgh, I don't know the person's names, so I ain't going to out them, but there's a person in Pittsburgh that definitely looked me up and down, and I think we were about to fight. I'm pretty convinced, <laughs> pretty convinced that we almost threw hands. Ended up ending amicably. I walked away quickly. <laughs> Other times I've heard thank you. Other times I've gotten just a simple acknowledgement with a nod. Sometimes I've even got a compliment back. I love those times where the person goes, hey, bro, you too. A couple of times we've actually dug into what makes a person's beard look so nice. And we talk about some of the products that they use. We talk about who they go to as a barber and why their barber is so amazing. And we talk about why their barber is more than just a barber, but a listener and a friend. One particular time when I was complimenting beards, I had a gentleman that said thank you and then they proceeded to walk away with their family. I'm thinking, interaction over. But about three minutes later, that person came back to me and they said with emotion visibly in their face, you don't know how much that meant to me. I appreciate you seeing me. Thank you. And I always get a little bit emotional when I think about them saying it because I have no idea what they were holding on to. I have no idea what was going on that day. I have no idea what they had just learned. I just knew we were at a farmer's market. But four words and 15 letters help someone to be seen. We can invest in other people and it doesn't cost a lot. A little bit of time, a few words, some acknowledgement, we can change lives. I believe that it's imperative that we don't necessarily compliment everyone's beard, though that'd be cool, start a movement, start a wave, but that we just see each other. Because no moment spent trying to genuinely see another person is ever squandered. If you take the time to see the other people in this room today or the people that you'll go back to work with later this afternoon or in your families this weekend, their lives will improve. The research shows it. Why should we allow people to suffer with loneliness and isolation simply because we're too busy in our screens or too busy accomplishing our goals? We need to make time for other people and hopes that they'll make time for us. That brings me to my last story. This is a young man by the name of Ladanian. Ladanian attends the university that I work at, and Ladanian's a graphic design major. He's a special young man. He used to work in an office that I was a part of a few months ago, and Ladanian, well, he wasn't the best worker. He was okay. There was some task he did really well, but for the most part, he wasn't really jiving with the answering of phones or the filing of paperwork. He didn't like the menial task that came with the job. But Ladanian did love art. I can remember one particular shift where Ladanian wanted to leave his job shift early, and we're like, bro, you just started, like an hour ago. <laughs> but he was like, hey, IUP's doing chalk the walk today, and I want to make sure that I put my entry in. We're like, all right, well, I guess you can go. And he actually won a prize. Ladanian is phenomenal. So rather than being frustrated with him because he wouldn't do some of the work that we assigned him to do, I took a moment one day and I said, let me treasure something that he treasures. Ladanian, where do you keep all of your art? Do you have a portfolio or something I could check out? And he told me I can check out his work on Instagram. So one weekend, I checked out his piece that he did on the weekend. I thought it was fantastic. I saw all the different angles. I'm only providing you with one today. And I thought, wow, this guy is so talented. And I made it a point to make sure on Monday I was going to tell him just how talented he was. I think he needed to hear that we cared about him and not just go file these papers. So on Monday, I told him about his work and I said, hey, you don't need to hear this from me. I don't even know how to do stick figures, but you're amazing. One day when I make enough money, I'm going to have you do some art for me. He said, one day, money, I love art. I'll make you something now. He proceeded to make a graphical representation for the mission of my small business. You see, we're all about encouraging and equipping men to groom their hearts, their minds, and their beards. And Ladanian captured it in an hour. The man is brilliant. He went on to make some other pieces for us, 
And one of them, I'm actually proud to say, I'm wearing today. Ladanian, whenever you watch this, thank you for helping me with my fit. <laughs> it's about the building blocks, right? Because we want to make wellness simple to people. And I think that whether it be about interacting or whether it be about connecting, we can do that very simply. I want to end our time today by reading a brief excerpt from a poem that I love that I think summarizes all of this so well. It's by the poet David White, and it's entitled Friendship. But no matter the medicinal virtues of being a true friend or sustaining a close and long relationship with another, the ultimate touchstone of friendship is not improvement, neither of the other nor of the self. The ultimate touchstone is witness. The privilege of having been seen by someone and the equal privilege of being granted the sight of the essence of another. To have walked with them and to have believed in them and sometimes just to have accompanied them for however brief a span on a journey impossible to accomplish alone. Friends, it is imperative that you know life's journey is impossible to accomplish alone. You might think you're productive sometimes by yourself, and those, there might be seasons where that happens, but we all need each other. If we want to see our communities renewed, if we want to see Pittsburgh renewed, if we want to see the world renewed, especially after COVID, and we want to take on this epidemic of loneliness, we need to take the time to see each other, to actively listen, to follow up, to treasure what people treasure. Because when we do, we will change the world. Stay well.